Welcome back to Phil's Kitchen. Today, we're gonna to make chicken parmesan. Okay, so we start out with some sm rather small chicken breasts. I'm not using the large ones because if you use the large ones, you kinda have to uh, butterfly them and then, then uh, you know, cause they're too thick and they, they, they won't cook fast enough. So here we are with a small chicken breast and we're gonna I've got some wax paper on a, on a board. So I'm going to put some more wax paper on. This way we don't contaminate the board and we don't contaminate the meat hammer. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and pound this out. Now we don't want the soup want to give it a little, this will tenderize it a little bit, and also it'll make your cutlet cook nice and quickly. So I've already done a few over here, so I'm going to move this over. Alright, so here's the process. Get rid of this. process is, and we're going to start out with a seasoned flour. Um, the reason we start out with flour, we're going to dredge those cutlets into the flour and then into the egg wash. And the reason we do that is because the flour and the egg combined is going to make a sticky consistency that's going to help the breadcrumbs adhere to. So. In this, uh, this egg wash is four eggs beaten and with a little water added in and salt and pepper. Um, any kind of seasoning you want to put in your flour is fine. Uh, also, these are seasoned Italian breadcrumbs uh, from Progresso, which I love Progresso breadcrumbs. So we're going to go ahead and dredge them and get them on this, on this cookie sheet. And all right, so here we go. All right, we're going in. So what you want to do after you go into the egg wash, you want to kind of let some of that egg wash kind of drizzle off. Then we're going to go into our Italian breadcrumbs, Italian seasoning. Because this is an Italian dish, so we're using Italian breadcrumbs. And as you see, those breadcrumbs stuck on there pretty nicely. So that's our first one. Okay. We're going to go in the egg wash again. Now, if you want to, you can season up that egg wash any way you want. If you want it hot, you can put some cayenne pepper in there. You know, I always say cook to your taste, cook to your likes. All right, number two. So we're doing four today. But if you've got a big crowd coming in, you know, as many as you want. Just need a, a bigger baking uh, pan and more chicken. <laughs> All right, so going in the dredge again. Now this is really, really simple. It's not complicated. It's um, easy to do. Um, it takes a little prep work, you know, getting everything out and, you know, getting everything ready. But once you do that, the rest of the preparation, like, you know, it's a quick fry and then in the oven to finish off with some mozzarella cheese and some little bit of uh, tomato.
tomato sauce. breadcrumbs now you know once you use this you can't reuse this again because of the egg so you have to throw it out so um, I use two cups I probably use a little too much but it's no big deal breadcrumbs are really cheap and plus you want to have enough you know you don't want to be there you know trying to coat these things and not have enough you know breadcrumbs to Get the job done. All right, so here we go now. All four of these are done. They're ready to go in the oil, and and you're ready to go in the oil. And get them fried, and then get them in the oven. All right, so now we're gonna fry these nicely breaded chicken cutlets up. We're going to do two at a time here so we don't crowd the pan. So I've got about a half an inch of vegetable oil in here. The um, reason I use vegetable oil because it's a very neutral oil and it won't impart its own flavor into the chicken color. So you're going to taste the seasonings and the breadcrumbs and the chicken and not the oil itself. But you can use any oil. You can use uh, canola. You can use peanut oil. You can use uh, olive oil even if you wanted. But if you do use olive oil, remember it has a low smoke point, um, which means that it starts to smoke at a lower temperature than other oils. So I would stay away from, if you're gonna deep fry or fry something, I'd stay away from olive oil. But you can use it if you're careful. All right, so these bad boys are sizzling. That oil is nice and hot. I'm going to take it from high and put it down to uh, medium high so I don't burn, you know, don't blacken them. I want them nice and brown. And you also have to remember, okay, you're not, you're not eating these right out of the pan. They're going to go into the oven. And they're going to cook for a while in the oven. So um, after they come out of the oven, you can always check and make sure you've got the right temperature, and which is for the chicken breast is 165. All right, that's looking beautiful already. We're going to go ahead and turn this one. Let's turn this one. I'm glad I put the temperature down a little bit. Yeah, because once that oil gets hot, if there's not, if you put too much in, like if I put all four of those in here, start squeezing in, that oil temperature is going to drop, and you don't want that. So that's why you do it in, you know, you do it in stages. You do two at a time, it's fine. Like I said, all we're looking for is we're looking for some nice color and crispiness and sealing in that those juices. Yeah, all good. All right, so now I'll let those. All right. So now these over here are going to relax and get ready to go in the oven. We're going to fry up our other two, and then we're going to put them in a nice baking dish with a little pizza sauce. I made a pizza the other night. I took some pictures. I put them on Facebook. But uh, anyway, I have some extra pizza sauce left, and so that's what we're using uh, today for our uh, chicken parmesan. Now, you can make your own sauce which I encourage people to make their own sauce. And we could probably do another whole video on that. So, but if, if you're going to, you know, if you're in a pinch and you need to, uh, and you want to make something quick, there's a lot of companies that make pizza sauce. And 
you know, in the little cans. And all you need is a little can because you don't want to put too much sauce into this. And the reason why is because it'll get soggy and it just won't have that crispiness that you spent all that time in the frying pan trying to accomplish. Alright, we're looking good. Almost ready to turn our last one. Oh man. I love chicken collards. Now you could you can eat this with mashed potatoes, green beans, whatever. Uh, also though, you can use it to make sandwiches. You know, you can make, get a nice ciabatta roll and put a, a nice piece of uh, chicken parmesan on top of that. Unbelievable. Delicious. Alright, so we're almost done with these two. Another thing about frying, you also see that the oil gets darker and darker the more you're frying it. So you might at some point, if you're doing more than just a few colors, you might at some point want to change your oil out. Let it cool off, put fresh oil in, and start again. Or else you're going to be, you know, frying in some really, you know, I don't think it's really going to affect your flavor too much. It might, but it might impart a little burnt taste to it. So. But since we're only doing four today, we are good to go all in until so it's nice and clean. Right. So, our cutlets are out, and we are ready to prepare. We have a nice, beautiful ceramic bacon dish here. So what I'm going to do is take a little bit of the sauce and spread it around. This is so we don't stick to the bottom of the pan here. And we get a little flavor on the bottom too. But you don't want to put a whole bunch here, just enough. Just enough to just get a little tiny Good. Okay, so now that's on. So what I'm going to do is take a little bit of a, since I see a little bit of oil here, I'm going to dab it. But these look really nice and they look like they're going to be delicious. So I go get my tongs. And we're going to lay these in, and lay these in sideways. And we're going to have just enough room. Okay. All right. So now we got our cutlets in. We're going to Add a little bit more sauce, but I'm talking about like drizzling it on, okay? I'm not talking about, you know, flooding this thing with tomato sauce. And like I said, the reason why we don't want to do that is because we've got this nice crisp chicken and we don't want to turn it into uh, a sloppy mess. Okay, so I think that looks fantastic. Next, we're going to go ahead and get our mozzarella on. And, uh, okay, so uh, I want to give you a little information on mozzarella cheese. And, you know, I've been reading a lot about food since I started a long time ago. And... 
this mozzarella cheese is low moisture mozzarella cheese, okay? And low moisture, um, when you get fresh mozzarella cheese, you got a lot of moisture in it. It's a high moisture cheese. So, believe it or not, the fresh mozzarella isn't really good with dishes like this because it really won't melt. Because there's so much moisture in it that it'll actually, that water will start coming out of it and, it, and it'll get kind of sloppy. But this is what's recommended is the low moisture and that's what this is here. And also, I want to add some nice Parmesan cheese. Okay. So, I think we're ready to go in the oven. And, uh, okay, I'm on 350. I'm going to back it off to 300. And we're going to cook this until that cheese is just, I mean, melted, completely melted. Um, and that chicken, I guarantee it will be cooked. And we'll check it. We'll give it a check. All right, welcome back. So we've had our chicken parmesan in the oven for 30 minutes now at 300 degrees. And uh, it's looking delicious. But what we're going to do, we're going to take it out, and we're going to check it, check the internal temperature of the meat of the chicken to make sure it's safe. Because the last thing we want to do is make our friends and loved ones sick or ill from not being careful enough while we're cooking. And that's important to me. And chicken is one of those, one of those things where um, you have to be careful. Because there are a lot of situations where, you know, people have salmonella poisoning from chicken. So, all right. So enough said. Here we go. All right. I get a close up of that. <laughs> And that look good? All right, so I'm going to take internal temperature here. All right, I'm over 165. So this is not only, not only is it delicious, but it's safe. <laughs> so anyway, I enjoyed being with you all today. And I hope you make some chicken parmesan. It's delicious. Your family will love it. The kids, I mean, what's not to love? Fried chicken with cheese and sauce on it. Come on. All right. Love y'all. See you soon.